Yeah, I would find, I would ask, you know, questions about previous projects. Maybe you could look at them. Maybe you could do some title search and find out, um, you know, what did you buy this, you know, this project for? What did you get in for? What did you sell it for? What kind of returns are you getting? It kind of depends on the partnership. You know, again, if it's a syndication, if it's a little more involved, um, then those types of things you're going to want to do. Look at their past projects. What kind of returns? What kind of, you know, what do their partners say? So if in a syndication there was 10 people, you know, you might, anybody that doesn't have anything to hide, Whitney's going to say, hey, listen, if you're thinking about investing in my syndication, go interview these eight people that, that invested in my last three syndications, right? So those types of things I would recommend. If it's, you know, a, a multi-unit project, same type of thing, do some background, find out who's involved, what kind of returns they have. Um, and, you know, do a little bit of the detective work to really find out um, if, it, if, if it's a lot of money or it's your name that's involved. Because remember, one of the other things is sometimes it's not so much money. None of us like to lose money at all. But sometimes your reputation or who you're associated with could be more damaging than losing money, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe that, that person may come back clear on a credit and background check. However, the reputation that they have could t possibly tarnish your reputation. Yeah, and I, I would say the other thing, um, look at the kind of structures and how they hold title and ownership on these properties. It's another big deal. I mean, I hate to be picky, but I've seen this happen before. You know, you have someone that's getting a bunch of investors involved on a property and it's not in a partnership or it's not in a corporation or it's not held in the right form. And then they go through a divorce and then all of a sudden you're going, wait a minute, what do you, what do you mean? How's this going to, I mean, it sounds, it sounds kind of crazy, but when you get in a partnership with someone, you really enter into a partnership with everybody as part of their life, if that makes sense. So if that person's married, uh, in a way, now you're in a partnership with that marriage. If that person's got another corporation or a business and have other things going on that could potentially happen to he or she, um, I'm not trying to be overly dramatic, but I've seen these types of things happen and I'm very familiar. I have lawyers on my show all the time and they've told me, you know, hundreds of stories of all kinds of these things with partnerships. So that's that I would say, I hope that I'm not scaring people away by being honest, but um, partnerships are very, very exciting and there can be very rewarding, but I would just say that, boy, do your homework and um, make sure you do your due diligence.